Hey, it's Brad here, back in the banger hangar for another episode of Overkill Reviews. Uh, if you're new here, that's our weekly metal review show, so hit that subscribe button and keep coming back. On to today's episode. I actually talked about this band in my first ever appearance on Banger TV. I've evolved since then, and so have they. That's right, it's the new album from Whitechapel called The Valley, out today on Metal Blade Records. We're about to pop the album cover on the screen, and funnily enough, you may notice that it's my second review in a row, where an eye is the focal point of the artwork. Whitechapel formed in 2006, taking their band name from the district in London where Jack the Ripper stalked and murdered women. A concept album about that followed before the band expanded their deathcore sound and lyrical breadth on the genre classic, this is Exile. Their last album found them experimenting with actual singing to mixed results. The band actually admits in the press release and in interviews that it is the weakest link in their discography. For this, their seventh album, longtime drummer Ben is out and they got a session guy. Given Naveen's track record with early deathcore innovators, animosity, instrumental tech proggers, animals as leaders, and his recent technical death metal band, Entheos, he is prepared for pretty much anything they can throw at him. So let's check out those oral projectiles. The opening song, When a Demon Defiles a Witch, which played earlier, is quite possibly the best summation of this album, and yes, the band's sound as a whole. It's got some serious aborted vibes, which is something that they haven't been utilizing as much lately which was unfortunate because when I first heard the band, I was like, damn, these guys really like aborted. But they've been mixing it with a little bit more of like a, a groovy metal thing. And then Phil Bozeman actually has some killer singing here. I can't think of a more effective utilization of that vocal style in deathcore. And that's probably because he's just so damn good, falling somewhere between a perfect circle and Slipknot slash Stone Sour. He expands this to a full song on Hickory Creek, which is absolutely striking. And his band does a great job of crafting music that's more rock-based than metal and super moody around that. Third Death is perhaps even more tender and vulnerable, despite the fact that they go into screams in the middle of it for a little bit. I'm going out on a limb here, and I'm going to say that Phil is top five, if not top three, metal vocalists going from his range, to his enunciation, to his vocal patterns to this newest addition to his arsenal. So yeah, Phil is often the star of this album and that's all too appropriate given that the album is about his childhood. That's the true events part that's referenced on the cover. It talks about his mother's struggles and different personalities and it makes it a more interesting listen when you're trying to determine if each song or even each individual line is being said from the perspective of Phil now as an adult, Phil back then as a kid, or his mother. The lyrics actually feature quotes from her journal, which Phil calls in the press release very disturbing and sometimes evil writings. It actually makes it feel like you're hearing different personalities. It makes it a much more terrifying, real listen. There's a line, we all know you're going to hell, come back to life, I'll send you myself. Now that could be coming from the diary direct, or maybe that's Phil now referencing some resentment that he has towards maybe his mom back then, maybe his stepdad. And that uncertainty leads to a really layered listen. Should I be talking right now? Oh, shit. Okay, I've got to pre-order the Full of Hell album, so I'm putting on my uh, Full of Hell hat for good luck. Dropping my phone on the floor, getting my laptop out. This is a very important moment of the day. LP and flag deluxe package. Vinyl is black inside clear and white half and half with white splatter. And I feel bad for whatever uh, person who works in the pressing plant who has to figure out how to make that because that sounds complicated but it sounds like it's gonna look fucking sick. And you know what? It's gonna sound fucking sick.
I've talked about the quieter moments on this album, but the bands still get heavy as hell. Forgiveness is Weakness might be the heaviest deathcore banger on this motherfucker, and the songs Brimstone and Black Bear go for a more groovy stomp. We Are One splits the difference with bursts of blast-beated faster sections breaking up the mid-tempo building blocks, which overall shows that this band is very diverse and all the members are more than pulling their weight. When I stop and think about it, sometimes I wish there was a little bit more fast stuff or more of the speedy, staccato, almost rap-esque vocals that blew my mind on the early stuff. But when I'm listening to the album, I just, I don't think about that. I don't notice it. It's only when I stop and really tear it apart in my head. So I think that's just a bit of me holding on and getting stuck on what Whitechapel has been to me in the past rather than just accepting this album for what it is because when I do that, I am enthralled. This new album is downright cinematic. From the vague, creepy title that sounds like it could come from an A24 horror film to the movie poster-esque artwork that reflects that, to the based on true events on the cover, to those actual events, to the music itself, which ebbs and flows throughout. Phil's mastery of singing adds to that and furthers his claim as one of the best vocalists in the genre, if not extreme metal as a whole. And the rest of his band do a great job of crafting music to fit the mood. In my exclaim review of their 2014 album, Our Endless War, I suggested that the band were going to follow Lamb of God's path to a more mainstream metal audience without compromising their sound or integrity. And though their last album kinda stumbled a little bit, this one more than writes that shit. For real world proof of that, look no further than my friends at the State of the Scene podcast. Sam, from the podcast, not Sam Dunn, told me that this band had never really connected with him, but when he heard When a Demon Defiles a Witch, he was suddenly very excited for the album. So whether you've never cared for this band, you did but you kinda lost interest, or you've always loved them, you should listen to this album. And if you're anything like me, you won't be able to stop. I mean, seriously, I listened to the album on my walk here. Notes were all done, I was ready, and I was still jamming it. For that reason, I'm giving it four and a half skulls out of five. All right, so it's shout out time, and I'm gonna stay in Canada for a little bit. First up, we've got Arrival of Autumn and their album Harbinger, which is out today on Nuclear Blast Records. They're kind of like a, a modern metal, metalcore, trivium-esque kind of band. Now we've got two albums that came out in the, in the previous few days, Mourn and their album Beneath the Beloved Axe out on Walk a Mile Records. They're just like straight up crowbar hate breed. Gojira Worship, and Six of Swords, who re-released their Regime Decay EP and Polar Vortex EP on Redefining Darkness and Roskull Records. All right, so now we're leaving Canada. I'm going to give a shout out to Night Rage and their album Wolf to Man, which is out today on Despots Records. They're a melodic death metal band. Some guy named Tom Thomas Lindbergh sang for them at one point. No big deal. And finally, we have the band Bloodline and their album Better View out today on Stay Sick Records. They call themselves an alternative metal band and my friend Jimmy works with them. So what's up, Jimmy? All right, so before you go, we've got a giveaway. Everybody likes free shit. So if you're signed up over on our Patreon, go find this video there and leave a comment with your favorite song from this album. If you want to include a why, cool. If you want to go to YouTube to comment that and talk to people about the album, cool. So yeah, enter over there. You could win a Whitechapel prize pack. Pretty fucking cool. That's it. If you're not signed up to our Patreon, you can sign up. Nobody's stopping you. I'm certainly not. How could the world take you from me?